Now, you might be saying to yourself right now, hey, didn't Lisa and Josh like hate the Camino? Didn't they have an awful time walking that thing? Why are they doing it again? And I don't think that that's the full story at all. I mean, there were definitely parts during the Camino where we were walking it, where we were like, what are we doing here? This is so hard. We're just walking like 20 miles every single day and wrestling with all this feelings and boredom and problems. And <laughs> it's just, there were some parts of it that were rough, but looking back at it, it was one of the best things that we've ever done. And I think it's exactly what we need right now. I'll explain more, but right now I'm in Wisconsin and I gotta get on a plane to make it to Amsterdam to meet up with Lisa and then we're flying down to Portugal to start the Camino. So I gotta get running. About to embark on our next quest. First stop, Amsterdam. Pick up Josh. For you, for your safety, he lands in two minutes. People are getting off the plane. <laughs> 18 hours later, we are uh, on our last flight to Porto to start walking every day for the next two to three weeks. <laughs> Oh my god, what a long day. Okay, so just ordered a free now, which is basically like Lyft or Uber, but here in Portugal. We just got to Porto and it feels incredible. We love the city. But there's something special about coming here to start our second ever Camino. There's something about Quest, there's something about the Camino that just keeps us coming back. And we've been talking about the Camino ever since we did it almost two years ago. I'm excited. Super jet lagged. Shower. Port wine. Sleep. <laughs> the Camino begins. Good night. We're about to do our second Camino ever, the Camino Portuguese, which starts here in Porto all the way to Santiago. It's about 260 kilometers or about 170 miles, so it's going to take us a couple of weeks to complete. I would say right now we're feeling pretty relaxed about the whole thing, which is a little odd because tomorrow we're going to be walking like 18 miles and it's been quite a long time since we last walked that far. And we only planned this thing like a couple of days ago. So it's the middle of February right now. This is winter for Portugal, obviously. It's maybe like 55, 60 degrees outside. And the weather, from what it looks like, is gonna be basically rainy every single day during our entire Camino that we're walking. And that's fine. Honestly, I feel pretty good about the whole thing. I feel pretty good about the whole thing. But we obviously need some different clothes, some different everything than what we have right now, so. a very small backpack on purpose. What we learned last time is you should bring way less stuff than you think on this because you gotta carry it the whole way. So I think I'm looking just for like one really good kind of warm layer that's gonna dry really fast and then probably just a rain jacket or something that I can put over everything like a big poncho. We look back on the Camino so fondly even though if you watched our documentary you might be tricked into thinking that we had a really bad time on it and there were some bad times on the Camino but it was us, right? It was us struggling and now this feels more comfortable, more fun, more relaxed. I don't know how to explain it better than that. I'm super excited to see what the differences are between this Camino Portuguese and then the one that we did before, the Camino Francis. I think it's gonna be awesome. We got the weird, the weird nipple mats. <laughs> you never know when you'll need them. That's yeah, true. Does anybody else love these? These are the best. It just feels so good. Pretty chic, huh? <laughs> Maybe I need like a packable rain jacket like this thing, just to keep me dry and not take up too much space in the bag. So this is what I brought for walking the whole thing. See if this works. Do I look cool? Yeah, here, let me help you. This is our future. Oh, yeah. Does that work? That works. I think I'm good to go. Hardest part of these things is getting it back into where it came from. It's really hard not to shop here for everything else that I don't need. I can't believe these are so affordable. Like this rain jacket is 25 euros. I already have this rain jacket, which my brother nicely got me several years ago and it's lasted me a really long time, so I don't need that. So I think I'm just gonna get like one 
one like long sleeve fleece or something to keep me warm and then a poncho. Oh, that's weird. Hey Lisa, come and check this out. Don't you think that's weird? Thumb holes. Pretty warm, breathable. This will dry quick, which is important. So last time I got a backpack from Decathlon and it was perfect. Like 20, 30 liter bag, carried my laptop and all my stuff and I had extra room. I'm gonna look for something that has a laptop sleeve, water bottles, holders, and a good backing with straps that are that are like comfy and cushy. And the thing that I, I liked about the bag last time that I didn't know I liked is this thing. Cause you can just like strap on like the poncho that we had when we didn't need it, but needed it quickly. Both are nice. Let me see it. Final decision. Blue one? Yeah. All right. Who am I? Oh, this right here is the, uh, the first of many steps of me becoming my dad. jacket who this so we gotta head to the cathedral get our pilgrims passport so that way we can be official pilgrims and complete the Camino in an official fashion I know it seems kind of like overcast and a little bit dull outside today but honestly I hope the weather is exactly like this every single day the last Camino that we did was just so hot all the time that we had to get up super early and start walking at like five in the morning just to like get to where we needed to go before it got unbearable. But this, I could walk in this all day. I remember those. The thing that we're getting today is something called bifanas, which I think are gonna be what baguettes were to our last one, where we're basically eating these three to four times a day. It's just like a delicious, saucy pork, slightly spicy, very, very savory sandwich. God, it's so good. It's got a good kick to it, it's spicy. So fun to walk around and be here again, try something different and go on a different quest. Okay, fine, we'll get some. <laughs> Cool to see parts of Porto that we didn't see before last time. I don't think we've ever been to this area here, this cathedral, and it's so beautiful. It's open, and there's music playing, there's a definite moodiness to it that I love. We got our pilgrim's passport. They were two euros each, and it's already stamped by the cathedral for us, so we didn't have an official. Is that how it goes? Pachonk. <laughs> Pachonk. This route feels a little bit more lax or casual than the Francis one because we had to we had to rush to the pilgrim's office last time and get all this paperwork. I'm kind of glad this one's a little bit more relaxed. And there's live music. So this is yeah, I think this is the official starting point, and there are different routes you can take a lot of people go up the coastal route I think we're gonna go I think we're gonna do some of the coastal route tomorrow and see how the weather goes and then go more inland to the central route which is where apparently it's the most popular that was easy peasy but now we gotta finish up our shopping we're on Santa Catarina which is the really busy street in Porto it is packed and beautiful there's music we're trying to find Flying Tiger. I love this store because it has all kinds of knickknacks and affordable things, but specifically, this place sells second skin that saved their lives in the Camino last time and ponchos for like three years. Also, this store just puts me in a good mood. There's so much fun stuff and there's always good music playing. Raincoat, they don't have the ponchos like last time. No more struggle, city. No second skin, but we can find one. Super glad that we had this extra day here before we started to kind of like kick off the jet lag and also get ourselves enough time to actually buy all this stuff. I'm really hoping that the blister packs are in here at this pharmacy because I think all the rest of them are starting to close. 
Okay, I think, I think we got everything that we need to leave tomorrow. Our first leg tomorrow is supposed to be about 24K, so we've got a very long walk ahead of us. But if we've learned anything from our last Camino, I mean, we literally made a full documentary about this exact same idea. It's that you gotta do it your way. So we're just gonna go as far as we want to and then stop. We haven't booked anywhere to stay, but uh, we're just gonna do that while we're walking tomorrow. We've got plenty of time. That's nice to sit down. <laughs> I just looked, we walked about six miles today, which means tomorrow we're gonna do three times as much as that. Kebab pizza. Mm. Man, I was so excited and energetic this morning and now I'm tired. Carb loading for tomorrow, day one. <laughs> Home sweet home. Okay, so our room is a total disaster right now, and that's because we haven't packed anything into anything yet. So we're gonna do all that. We're gonna pack up for tonight, and then we gotta get up bright and early, make our way back to the cathedral, and then walk 24K tomorrow. I'm really excited to start this thing. I'm also kind of nervous that maybe we're in a little bit over our heads. Yesterday was a pretty sleepless night, tossing and turning. I mean, the jet lag didn't help. I have that like nervous excitement. Like I'm ready to start the thing, but I'm also very, very nervous that we have to walk 24 kilometers today. 24K. That's pretty heavy. Getting to the start line is intense. A hill, oh, day one. First step of our Camino Portuguese. Actually, the uh, best way is, is that way along the coast. So, uh, that way. We're just now leaving the Porto Cathedral, going down these stairs that we climbed yesterday and heading down towards the water. We're actually going to take the coastal or litoral or the littoral route first, follow the coast. You know, we're both not Catholic and normally we don't have a, like a strong feeling for ornate buildings, but that cathedral was pretty stunning. We just started and we're lost. These staircases of Porto, very, very narrow and windy. Okay, I think we found the route. We 
have made it to some kind of metal boardwalk above some water just outside of Porto and next to the highway. We're off to a shaky, adventurous start so far. Porto, behind us. So as we were looking up the Camino Portuguese, we were trying to decide which route to take. Because yeah. there are actually four different routes. So one of them is the coastal route, and that's the one that we're on right now. And then the other one is the literal route, and that's also the one that we're on right now. The central route, which we're going to be hooking up with in about a day and a half, that's more central inland. I think that'll be nice, and we're going to be getting there in a couple days. And then there's the spiritual way, which is basically the same as the central route, except right at the end, it just kind of like whoop. Uh, whoop. <laughs> So the way that we decided is we looked up all of the different routes and what people recommended and what we saw over and over was take the coastal route for the first day and a half and then after that go right up to the central route and then take that all the rest of the way. The reason for that is the central route is way more built up for all the pilgrimy stuff that you can do along the way. And the coastal route is just an awesome way to see the outskirts of Porto. Like look at the beautiful coast. Yeah. We were originally thinking of doing the coastal route the entire way. But it's February and with winter, sometimes you just never can tell what the weather is going to be like. We yeah. read that it could be rainy, windy. So far, it's just overcast and gloomy today, but I see some rain up ahead. All those reasons combined, especially because during the off season, a lot of the different hotels and albergues are closed, that it just seemed like a better idea to do the central route. But if you're doing this during a more normal time, like not February, uh, you could probably do any of these routes and be totally fine. Wow. But seeing that weather up ahead makes me realize that it's probably time for me to book us a place to stay. It might have to be sooner than we think. Okay, so the first stage is to go all the way from Porto to Le Bruges. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing all of these terribly. I'll, I'll learn, I promise. So I looked at the available options between here and there, and there's basically nothing except for the Elbergi and Le Bruges, and we were gonna stay there. But then, how do you feel about staying at a mobile home tonight? What? It'll be cool. Felt my first drip of rain. Is it the first day of Camino without some rain? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we knew this was coming, but I didn't think it'd be this fast. Still a struggle. May not fit. <laughs> this is this is not gonna work. <laughs> Buen Camino.